Jesus. So I think uh, that we're gonna we're gonna um, bring bring you down into the pit here. They're gonna bring it up, and we're gonna have a chance to, to chat. And uh, yeah, we all love you. There you go. She's awesome. She's absolutely awesome. <laughs> I just, you know, some of the things that we were talking about in the past couple of days, it's fine, right? here we are. Oh, can you see this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Just so everybody can see. Yes, I, I did uh, um, 
a very short role on Desperate Housewives. Yeah, we'll see, it, we'll see it later on. It, it, I don't have a date, and I wouldn't. I've been about it. Uh, signing a non-disclosure agreement and everything, so I can't even talk about it really. Uh, but it, I think you know, it's all right to say that I'm going to be on it. Let's talk a little bit about that, man, because that's what we came oh, for, right, folks? Yes. Yep. It's, how did the Batman and the Catwoman role come about? For you? Well, as I understand it, Julie Newmar, because Julie Newmar did, it was the original Catwoman. She played it for the first season on television. Then uh, she couldn't or wouldn't or wasn't able to uh, do the film, so they sent out a blanket offer to a lot of women to come in and audition for it. And I was one of those lucky ones. Um, in about 900, uh, no, not 999 other uh, women, and uh, I was lucky enough to get the role. And the next day, after auditioning for it, the next day I was in wardrobe, and the following day I was going. Time to prepare, not much time to get a character going. But luckily, I had grown up with cats all the time. That's how I auditioned. I really did. I, I auditioned. I sat and I, I read the script and was talking to them and licking my hand and then kneading my lap and, and things like that. And um, thereby hangs a tail. <laughs> yeah, but with, with preparing for the role of Captain. Mm -hmm. Some people may disagree, but I think this lady has the sexiest meow in show business. <laughs> <laughs> How did you develop the cat meow? It's, it's a cat meow that I had heard for years in Phoenix, Arizona when I lived there. Uh, the cats, there were three cats in the neighborhood, and they would come and sit on our back fence, and they would cry at the moon, or cry at each other, or meow at each other. I, I was never able to figure it out, but it was, it was an, a very distinctive meow, and you'll hear it on the, on the screen. It's a meow. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> If, they, if you haven't seen the picture, or you haven't seen it for a long time, there are special moments that are special to me anyway in the film, and they're such fun to watch, um, or, or at least to know about. Um, Frank Borsham always had to wear the green leotards. <laughs> he really didn't feel comfortable in them. He never liked them, but, you know, that was the character. And, for the film, he got them to design a beautiful jacket and uh, a suit that, and pants, regular, you know, and he, he, he wanted to show it off because the shirt was also very exciting. And he said, went to Les Martin, so he's the director, I, I want to take off my, my jacket, you know, in the scene. And he said, no, 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 we don't have time to, to rehearse it. There was never enough time to rehearse the, the bits and pieces that we were all doing. It was just time is money and let's get this done. And he said, well, all right, okay. And he didn't argue anymore. But when Les Martin said, said all right, well, action, Frank says his line, couple of lines, and then he stood up and he was supposed to go around the table, but in doing so, he took off his jacket and he put it, hung it up on the thing and backed out. Didn't miss a beat, didn't miss his lines or anything. He was, I mean, that's brilliant when you do something off the top of your head and it works, it was just marvelous. That's something to watch. Also, Burgess Meredith, when they're, he's probably dissolved people into mounds of dust. He's a hydrator. I've never seen this before because it's got to be really confusing. <laughs> and they become mounds of dust, and these were all little blue dust piles because the men were dressed in blue. Anyway, um, I marvel that they do this film at all. <laughs> so I have a dustpan and a whisk broom, and he's, uh, he has. 
I've forgotten now. I think of funnel or something to funnel it into something. And I'm brushing up and, and, he, and going on about, Burgess is going on about, let's be careful and everything. And, there's a, and then he just keeps going. He said, uh, let's be careful. Every one of them has a mother. <laughs> well, that was not in the script. And I went, <laughs> Well, you don't see me do that. They watch how they cut. They cut out all of the me going. Ha! <laughs> uh, those those are the couple of things that, that I I really remember and love. That and my my cat paw when I'm dressed as Kitka, and then I realize that I'm I'm doing Catwoman things, and I I love that. Yeah, it's something that I just, <laughs> it's kind of special. Tell me a little bit about the production schedule. Well, people said anywhere from 25 days to uh, 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 about 19 days. I think it was 18 days. It just seemed to go by so fast. And it, we, we stuck to the uh, pretty much their own, because uh, they used the same crew uh, of uh, the TV series. And so they were used to getting the show done very quickly, getting the scenes done, set up, and go and film it, and go and do it. And that's the way they filmed the, uh, the, the movie. And I, I, so I would say anywhere between 18 and maybe 25 days. That's, that's a very short time to do a movie. Yes. I know there, was, there were probably several weeks afterwards where it was all put together. It had to be because of editing alone had to be amazing just to cut out all our mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides that, and of course, Lee also was in a show called Time Tunnel. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then later on, Bob I just oh, Buddy Epson. Oh, Buddy Epson was a dream. He was one of the, the gentlest souls I've ever met, and uh, a gentleman mm -hmm. as well always considerate of his fellow performers and uh, always considerate of doing the work at an age when your memory begins to to you know disintegrate a little bit uh but he could have had uh cue cards he didn't want them i think it's his theater dream. i really do think it was that he insisted on learning all of his lines and he was always on time he was never late he was never late to the set he always helped. He always dressed off camera the way he was on camera, so that the actor who has a close up and you're standing beside the camera, Buddy Epson always looked the way he was in the scene. And I told him, I said, Buddy, it's 105. You don't have to put your jacket back on. Heavens, you know, he was perspiring and everything. He said, No, no, I, I want to look the way I, I look for him, or the fellow who was acting with him. In the scene. Things like that he would do all the time. He, he sent back your notes, I know, to all the, the actors on the show uh, all the time, every week, different actors, and we thank them all for being such wonderful performers. But just a, a dear, gentle, gentle spirit. Also, in your gentle spirit, <laughs> I'll tell you a, a quick story. This, this lady flew in the other night, got off her airplane, went to baggage, got in my car and drove to an interview about this event and about the New Jersey Comic Expo all the routine that they were having. <coughs> if you don't have a chance to get out tomorrow, try and get out there and see the Batmobile, the Batcopter, the original Batcopter. Fantastic. There are three Batmobiles and, and, and four, the fourth one was the Michael Keaton look. The like the Batmobiles, the Back to the Future Glory. And we have several celebrities from the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Deanna Lunt. Mm -hmm. Susan Silo, Donna Warren, and Terry Moore, all poor, deluded females. <laughs> yes, poor, deluded men. No way are they in person deluded. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. if you get out to the TNF Armory tomorrow, make sure you do. You'll get to, to see a lot of great bat stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and before we end, I have a, I have a request of you that's going to make many bat fans their hearts out. Oh dear, what? <laughs> I would like a kiss. Oh, <laughs> sneaky Tom. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
is one of the classiest, racist, wonderful ladies in show business. That would be $20 for that. <laughs> <laughs> I want every cent. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to redress the house. This is me, man. Thank you so much. We're going to love it.